chapter one, 10 principles of economics. In this chapter, we seek to answer the following questions. What kinds of questions does economics address? What are the principles of how people make decisions? What are the principles of how people interact? What are the principles of how the economy as a whole works? 10 principles of economics. Now, in economics, we are concerned with resources, and uh, resources are scarce. Scarcity is the limited nature of society's resources. And that means society has limited resources and cannot produce all the goods and services people wish to have. And so economics is defined as the study of how society manages its scarce resources. So economists study things like how people decide how much they work, what they buy, how much they save, and how they invest their savings. How farms decide how much to produce and how many workers to hire. How society decides how to divide its resources between national defense, consumer goods, protecting the environment, and other needs. The first four principles deals with how people make decisions, and they are principle one, people face trade-offs, principle two, the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Principle three, rational people think at the margin. Principle four, people respond to incentives. Let's take this one by one. Principle one, people face trade-offs. To get something that we like, we have to give up something else that we also like. Going to a party the night before an exam, that means less time for studying. Not a good idea. Having more money to buy stuff, that means you got to work longer hours and there is less time for leisure. Protecting the environment means resources could be used to produce consumer goods are now devoted to protecting the environment. People face trade-offs. Example one is how society faces trade-offs. The more it spends on national defense, like guns to protect from foreign aggressors, the less it can spend on consumer goods, like butter, to raise its people's standard of living. Pollution regulations means cleaner environment and improved health, but at the cost of reducing the well-being of the farms, owners, workers, and customers. Example B, society also faces trade-offs between efficiency and equality. Efficiency is defined as a our society gets the maximum benefit from its scarce resources. Equality, prosperity is distributed uniformly among society's members. So where's the trade-off? To achieve greater equality, which is a good thing, we could redistribute income from wealthy to poor. But this reduces incentive to work and produce, shrinking the size of economic pie. There's a trade-off right there. Principle two, the cost of something is what you give up to get it. So making decisions involves compare costs with benefits of alternatives and which means you need to include opportunity cost. 
opportunity cost is defined as whatever must be given up to obtain some other item. Example of opportunity cost. What is the opportunity cost of going to college for a year? Tuition and books and fees, yes. Uh, room and board, no. Room and board is not included in opportunity cost because whether you are in college or you are at home, you will need room and board. So it cannot be included in calculating opportunity cost. Forgone earning, yes. When you are in college, you don't work. You are not going to uh, have that job. That is a opportunity cost. So what's the opportunity cost of going to the movies? The price of the movie ticket, yes. Plus the value of time you spend in the theater, yes. Principle three, rational people think at the margin. Rational people systematically and purposefully do the best they can to achieve their objectives given the available opportunities. They make decisions by evaluating costs and benefits of marginal changes. Marginal changes is uh, the small incremental adjustments to a plan of action. Active learning one, thinking at the margin. As the manager of the local save a lot, you are thinking of hiring one more cashier that would increase sales revenue by $400 per week. The new cashier would earn $300 per week. Should you hire the new cashier? Why? Number B, you pay $12 a month for access to Netflix, regardless of how many movies or TV shows you watch in a month. Should you watch one movie or episode? Why? Answer. Manager at the local save a lot. Marginal benefit of hiring one more cashier, sales would go up by $400 per week. What's the marginal cost of hiring one more cashier? The new cashier would earn $300 decision because the marginal benefits exceeds marginal cost the manager should hire the additional cashier number b the netflix marginal benefits of watching one more movie that is the enjoyment you get from watching the movie uh, monetary cost is zero the opportunity cost of time must be considered Decision, if the marginal benefit exceeds the marginal cost, watch the movie. Thinking at the margin. Principle four, people respond to incentives. What are incentives? Something that induces a person to act. It can have unintended consequences. Yes. People respond to incentives because rational people make decisions by comparing costs and benefits. An increase in the price of donuts, consumers buy fewer donuts, sellers produce more donuts. Example three, incentives. If government increases the gasoline tax by $1 per gallon, how do consumers respond? They drive smaller cars or more fuel efficient cars. They carpool more. They use public transportation. They move closer to work. People respond to incentives. How do businesses respond? Think about it. Active learning too, applying the principles. You are selling your black 1967 Chevy Impala. You have already spent 2000 on repairs. At the last time, the transmission dies. You can pay 
$1,400 to have it repaired or sell the car as is? In each of the following scenarios, should you have the transmission repaired? Explain why. Number A, the book value, what you could get for the car is 14,500 if transmission works. Or you can get 11,200 if transmission doesn't. Number B, blue book value is $12,300 if transmission works. $11,000 if it doesn't. The answer. Cost of fixing the transmission is $1,400. The blue book value is $14,500 if transmission works. $11,200 if it doesn't. The benefit of fixing the transmission is $3,300, which is $14,500. The car working. With, the, with good transmission, minus 11,200 if you sell it as is. And if you compare that with the cost of fixing the transmission, marginal benefits, higher than marginal cost, get the transmission fixed. Number B, blue book value is $12,300 if transmission works, 11,000 if transmission doesn't. The benefit of fixing the transmission is $1,300, which is $12,300. Transmission works. $11,000. Transmission doesn't work. The difference, $1,300. What does it cost to fix the car? $1,400. Don't fix it. Sell it as is. People make decisions on the margin. The next uh, set of uh, principles deal with how people interact. And In principle number five, trade can make everyone better off. Principle number six, markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. Principle number seven, governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. Let's look at them one by one. Principle number five, trade can make everyone better off. People benefit from trade. People can buy a greater variety of goods and services at lower cost. Countries too benefit from trade. Allows countries to specialize in what they do best. We don't have to produce coffee here in the United States. We can let let them grow it in Brazil or in Kenya. And so America can concentrate on producing what it does best. Enjoy a greater variety of goods and services. Principle number six, markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. Number one, markets. It's defined as a group of buyers and sellers, need not be a single location, as long as there is a, a network of communication or as long as there's some institutional arrangement that bring buyers and sellers together, a market has existed. Organized economic activity means determining these questions, what goods and services to produce, how to produce these goods and services how to allocate them to their final user. Market economy allocates resources through the decentralized decision make decisions of many farms and households as they interact in markets. Proven remarkably successful in organizing economic activity to promote overall prosperity. Prices. Prices are determined by the interaction of buyers and sellers. Prices reflect the goods value to buyers and prices reflect the cost of producing the goods uh, to the sellers. Adam Smith's invisible hand theory means prices guide self-interested households and farms 
to make decisions that maximize society's economic well-being. Principle seven, governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. Government enforce property rights, that's a good thing. Enforce rules and maintain institutions that are key to a market economy. People are less inclined to work, produce, invest, or purchase if there is a large risk of their property being stolen. We rely on government provided police and courts to enforce our rights over the things we produce. Government promote efficiency, avoid market failure, market left on its own fails to allocate resources efficiently. Uh, externality is a source of market failure. And that externality means production or consumption of a good will affect bystanders like pollution. Another source of market power, uh, another source of market failure is market power. And that's a single buyer or seller has substantial influence on market price, for example, monopoly. Governments promote equality. Governments avoid disparities in economic well being. Governments use tax or welfare policies to change how the economic pie is divided. To say that uh, the government can improve market outcomes does not mean that it always will. Yes, sometimes governments fail. That is why principle number seven say government can sometimes improve market outcomes, not always. Active learning three, the government. In each of the following situations, what is the government's role. Does the government's intervention improve the outcome? What do you think of number A, public schools for K through 12? Should the government be involved? Is there something good in having public schools? Number B, workplace safety regulations. Should the government be involved in making sure that you are safe where you work? Number C, public highways. Should government be involved in producing and maintaining highways? Or should we leave that to the private sector? Number D, patent laws which allow drug companies to charge high prices for life-saving drugs. What are your thoughts on this? The next set of uh, principles deal with how the economy as a whole works. And starting with principle number eight, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. Principle number nine, prices rise when the government prints too much money. Principle number 10, society faces a short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. Let's take them one by one. Principle eight, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. There is a huge variation in living standards across countries and over time. In 2007, average income was 60,000 in the United States and 6,000 in Nigeria. Average income in rich countries is more than 10 times average income in poor countries. And in the, United, in the United States, standard of living today is about 80 times greater than 100 years ago. Productivity is the most important determinant of standard of, of, of living standards. Quantity of goods and services produced from each unit of labor, that is productivity. It depends on the equipment that labor has got, skills, and the technology available to workers. 
other factors, including labor unions and competition from abroad, have far less impact on living standards. Principle number nine, prices rise when the government prints too much money. Inflation is defined as an increase in the overall level of prices in the economy. In the long run, inflation is almost always caused by excessive growth in the quantity of money, which causes the value of money to fall. The faster the government creates money, the greater the inflation rate. Principle 10. Society faces a short-run trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Short-run trade-off between inflation and unemployment. In the short run, many economic policies push inflation and unemployment in opposite directions. Other factors can make this trade-off more or less favorable, but the trade-off is always present. Think, pair, and share. Something to think about. Your university decides to reduce the price of a parking permit on campus from $250 per semester to $10 per semester. Number eight the number of students desiring to park their cars on campus will what you can put that. Number B, the amount of time it will take to find a parking place will be, fill that one out. Will the lower price of a parking permit necessarily lower the true cost of parking? Hint, think opportunity costs. Number D, would the opportunity cost of parking be the same for students with no outside employment and students with jobs earning $15 per hour? Summary, chapter in a nutshell, in a nutshell. Individual decision-making, people face trade-offs among alternative goals. The cost of any action is measured in terms of foregone opportunities. Rational people make decisions by comparing marginal costs and marginal benefits. People change their behavior in response to the incentives they face. Interactions among people. Trade and interdependence can be mutually beneficial. Markets are usually a good way to co of coordinating economic activity among people. Government can potentially improve market outcomes by remedying a market failure or by promoting greater economic equality. The economy as a whole. Productivity is the ultimate source of living standards. Growth in the quantity of money is the ultimate source of inflation. Society faces a short-run trade-off between inflation and employment.